Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. As most of you already know, when an assistant professor or a guest lecturer is recruited at a college or a university level, before their interview is conducted, the interview panel generally assesses the academic performance of the individual who is being interviewed based on a system. This system popularly known as the API or the Academic Point Index or the Academic Performance Index is not completely a standardized set of rules but there are some generic possibilities which are there in this realm and people are often confused about what this is, how one can improve upon it, where exactly is this necessary, where are the places where one can work without an API and what exactly should you do if you want to keep your API up to date. So this video is all about that. Welcome. API or Academic Point Index is an evaluation, although objective, of how you have fared in your academic career starting from your graduation up until your PhD or whatever highest qualification you have. There is a chart which I will be putting up on your screen sometime later in this video. Though let me mention that the chart I would be sharing is not taken from the UGC website but from an advertisement made by B.R. Ambedkar University Delhi when they were recruiting their adjunct faculty a few months back. That is the chart which I have really close to me and after seeing recruitments happen at multiple places i have come to the conclusion that the process they follow is a more or less the standard though the points which have been allotted to several categories may vary a little from here to there and most importantly there is something you should know about api it is that there are only a few things about your api which you can change now and there are many things about your API which you cannot change anymore. Therefore, it is my advice to those of you who want to keep your API as good as it possibly can that you should not focus on what you cannot change but rather try and see what you can change in your API. There is no point to memorize the entire API chart which is why I have not. I would be sharing it on your screen and putting it up as a photo on your screen now. You can take a screenshot of this if you so wish or you can just pause the video and take a look at it. Now as you can see from this that there are several levels. I have now removed it from your screen because it causes a sort of distraction in my opinion. But let me tell you what are the things that are there in this. First of all is your graduation score, then your post graduation score, your qualifications after post grad that is your MPhil your PhD, your net with a JRF or your net without a JRF, your research publications, your teaching experience and if you have won any awards at the national or at the state level. Now depending on how much you have scored the generic distribution is you get one type of point if you have scored above 80, a little below it if you have scored 60 to 80 a little below it if you have scored 45 to 60 and the lowest if you have scored below 45. This is for your graduation. In your post grad, the 80 bit and the 60 to 80 bit is same but below 60 it's all the same. I'm not very sure about this because as I told you I have not memorized the entire chart but you can again go back to the video where I had shared that and you can check it out for yourself. Then the highest point in the entire API chart is for your PhD. Here it has 30 points, in some places it has 20, in some places it has 25. But the truth remains that the bulk of API rests on your PhD and by PhD one means a completed, defended and awarded PhD, not a halfway PhD. A halfway PhD will not, will not give you anything except a lasting impression. And even at the MPhil level if you have more than 60% you will get 7 and if you have below 60% you will get 5. If you have net with GRF, you'll get 7. If you have net without GRF, you have 5. So, those of you who are watching this video have most probably already given your bachelor's degree and are done with it. And some of you might have also been done with your master's degree examinations. 
so these two scores you cannot change anymore but if you are still giving your master degree and if you know that you are studying at a university where you can get more than 80% which is not a very common thing in west bengal but still if you are in one of those lucky places then try and get above 80 but even then that won't make so much of a difference because even then if you get 85 and someone gets 65 at the end of the day when one calculates your api that person will only get two more than you so getting a huge number in your masters or bachelors is of course a bonus but if you don't get it it's not the end of the world that's what i'm trying to say now comes the most important point which is how to increase our api well in my opinion i would suggest that you do more and more publications there are some complications about it and i have made a detailed video about how to get your works published where you should publish it and more about it can be found in this link i have put upwards go ahead and check that one out what i'm trying to say here is that not every publication is accepted everywhere just a few days ago in our whatsapp group called academic sources we were discussing about how book publications are becoming more and more predatory in this day and age even taylor and francis whose subgroup is rootledge even they charge an exorbitant amount of money if you want to get your works published quickly all publications are not accepted at all places those scopus index ugc care listed journals are accepted in most places and in addition if you get a teaching job please try to stick to it i know these jobs are hard i have been doing them for the past two and a half years in intermittent spans but if you can stick to it and if you can manage 12 months at one place or at multiple places then you get one point or two points for each year depending on the place where you are applying now let me answer some common questions about api the first question which i have been asked in this context is whether api is the end of the world or not well a very simple answer to this question is of course not api is not the end of the world of course it makes some difference if you have a good api it will put you forward and if you don't have such a good api it will push you back a little bit but what matters the most is how you give your interview i have several videos on this channel about how to give an interview for the post of an assistant professor both for the ongoing wbcsc and in general for the post of an assistant professor in english in colleges and universities you can browse my channel to find out those videos and i hope they would be helpful to you but the interview is the most important of course if you have a lot of academic backing that would help you if you have a great academic record if you are a gold medalist at any point of your time in your academic career all these things would obviously help but even if you lack a little bit of academic grandeur a little bit here and there i don't think it makes much of a difference finally let me talk about the pbas api what is pbas performance based assessment system and api you already know by now this is a system which is used for mainly promotion of faculty members who are already employed. Very few universities use the PBAS API system to recruit and the UGC has a document where the PBAS API is explained in great detail. I will put the link for that downwards but this video is not about the PBAS API but the more common API which is used for recruitments for freshers at entry level at colleges and universities but in this context i would like to mention that the things that are included in the api they are not all you should be focusing on in addition you should also focus on workshops summer schools conferences seminars if you're a faculty member then fdps that is faculty development programs certificate courses translation learning another language managing to get feedback from your students or feedback from your supervisors whatever state you are in you should try to make the best of it and if you do that then your api would automatically get increased the last thing that one should keep in mind while dealing with a concept as nuanced and as intricate as api is that one cannot be sure 
that your API would be calculated at all. There are many places who don't calculate the API at all. They just take a look at your academic records overall. And if it's more or less all right, then they just go ahead with the interview. Of course, more rigorous interviews like WBCSC, WBPSC or the ad hoc recruitment at Delhi University or places where there are many candidates and very limited seats there this kind of a process cannot be followed but where there are very few applicants and maybe two or three seats then this process can be followed so even if you have like say less than 60 percent at bachelor's level many of you might have that because of the benevolence of our great university of calcutta even then please don't lose i still believe that you can make it in academia and my best wishes to all of you Thank you for watching this video and thank you for wanting a video on API for such a long time. If you have any questions, queries, doubts or comments, please don't forget to let them know down in the comments. And of course, please also don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. I will see you in the next video. Till then, hasta la vista.